it's pretty nice for this time of year. And what it really made me think of is, wow, this time of year, normally, you know, we'd be, be heading to Phoenix, Arizona, going to the waste management, you know, Dustin, your annual, annual trip, that tournament would be going on really the, the biggest party tournament in golf. I know a lot of people from around here and all over go down for that. Um, and I know, I think everyone's missing the waste management, but, uh, for us, lots of, lots of good stories to come from that. And I know just when we're talking about that, I think Dustin, to get to know you and the type of person you are, and we are a little better. Tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess your annual waste management trips. So we've been going down five years. Last year was the first year we took off and it's a PGA golf tournament. And if I could relate it to anything, I'd relate it to Happy Gilmore where there's literally beach balls flying around the stands and, and crazy party goers. And, and there's over 200,000 people a day at this tournament. And uh, I guess that's just a little bit of a background on it. And uh, the 16th hole is is the crazy hole where where fans from all over the world are trying to get to. And and uh, we we decided one year that we were going to dress up as Sesame Street, and and we started off with four guys, I think, and and it's expanded. I think the last time we went, Ted and Lundy were there, and I think we had uh, eight characters. And the Golf Channel and and all the the other news outlets down there usually have a lot of fun with with us idiots dressing up as as children superstars, I guess you could say. And so, who's the fastest character in Sesame Street? Be honest, guys. Big Bird. The land speed of Big Bird is about 47 miles an hour. Yeah. Is Oscar already hammered? No, Oscar's grouchy. It's early. <laughs> a lot of Pepto. A lot, a lot of, of Pepto. Of wise. Pre-em- preemptive, yeah. yeah. See, you guys are wise. Sesame Street really is truly an educational show. It's hard to get us all together now. You know, we, even on Sesame Street, everyone grows up, kind of grows apart. And we're here, we're here today to kind of rekindle those past memories. This is a Sesame Street reunion? Yep. Today's show is brought to you by love. <laughs> the, the craziest part of the whole tournament, and, and you guys can attest, is is you, you got to get there at, you know, four in the morning. We, we're we waking up and, and taking a limo at 4 a.m. And, and having some drinks on the way to the breakfast club. So, you know, Lundy and Ted, you could probably touch on a couple stories of, of the craziness that uh, that tournament is. Well, I'll tell you one thing, because I only went the one year, and when I first met you, you know, just over five years ago now, that was one of the first stories I heard. And I remember thinking every year and seeing you guys, okay, it's awesome. You're on TV dressed as Sesame Street. But I always thought, why the hell would those guys go through it? Because like you said, you're getting up at 4 a.m. You know, you're sitting there, you're there for like six hours before you even see a golf shot in the, in the hot sun in a costume. Then you go home and, and that's it. But I went with you guys, I did it. And I have to say, honestly, after the fact, I said, okay, why the fuck would anybody do this ever? <laughs> like it was, I think back and, and I know, I think Dustin's still a little trauma, traumatized from that, uh, that one specific year, but yeah, I mean, it was fun, but oh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So when you, you know, hopefully in years to come, when you turn on and see that golf tournament and you see all the people in costume and that, just know that they, they, they went through hell just to be there. So I, I have a different opinion than, than old Teddy does here. I've, I've gone two years um, same thing. I saw Dustin and his group go down the, the years prior. It looked like a blast. Um, I've, I've never been to a PGA tour event before. And I thought the waste management would be a, a great first one to go to. Um, so the first year I went down, um, I, I got dressed up. I was lent a, a really crappy Ernie costume and, and it was like, it was something that you would pay like 20 bucks for, for, from, for some large child. And we went down and yeah, sure enough, we woke up 4 a.m. We waited in line from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and then sprinted to our seats. And luckily we got there, so we got the good spots. And yeah, you're waiting five or six hours till the first golf shot, but you're still drinking and you're meeting everybody and we're, we're dressed up. So everyone wants to talk to us. So we made a ton of friends, had a thousand pictures taken that day. Uh, I had a blast. So, we, so when we went back the second year, I went. Same thing. We we dressed up. I upgraded my Ernie costume that year. And <laughs> Dustin, maybe I'll let you take over because you're probably a better storyteller from from this perspective. But uh, we we got we woke up at four, got in limo, waited in line from five to seven. And this year, it felt a little bit different, didn't it? Like it felt like there was more people, and it felt like everyone was a bit a bit tighter together. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many years we're going to have to wait to go back from this traumatizing experience, but 
Uh, you know, there's probably 10,000, 12,000 people there for 3,000 seats. And uh, I'd say we were in the, you know, the top 500, 1,000 people in, in the lineup. And, and typically in the lineup, they open the gates at 7, you go through, you scan your ticket, and uh, then you just sprint and you run. Well, this one was a little bit different, about 5 to 7. Um, you felt the push coming from the back. Everyone kind of got tighter. And then as uh, 6.55 hit, um, they kind of realized, oh, oh shit, this is, this is going to be a little bit of a stampede. And as you start to move forward, you're just kind of keeping your feet and you're in these costumes, these stupid costumes that you can hardly see out of. <laughs> and uh, Big Bird's like seven feet tall and, and he's literally only five feet tall in real life. So he's he's got no arms inside his costume. And, and you're just asking the people in front of you to stay on their feet because you know that if anyone goes down, it's going to be a stampede over top of you. Well, sure enough, right as we're kind of getting into the, the stadium or, or the course, um, you know, a few people go down and, and all of a sudden Bert and Ernie and Oscar and everyone else starts falling and, and we're getting trampled. And it felt like about five minutes of us getting trampled on and stepped on. I rolled out of there in the Oscar costume and, and started running to the hole and realized I didn't have any shoes on. My shoes got sucked up in the, in the pile. And, and then you realize, holy shit, there was just a trampling and I was just going to run to the hole away from all my friends. And I look back and, and Bert, Bert and Ernie's heads are rolling around on the ground. So I, I, I pick, I pick up Bert and Ernie's heads and I'm just kind of waiting there and waiting for this, you know, trying to help people up and stuff. And, and all of a sudden all of us kind of meet in the same area and, and big bird, <laughs> he somehow escaped his costume and it's like 50 yards away from this starting point. And, and we all kind of gather together and, and then we're thinking, okay, we better get to the hole and find our spots. And like four of us are missing our shoes and a couple of guys are missing sunglass. And it's like, holy shit, they got to figure this out. And we took the year off and it was a traumatizing day and kind of took all the energy out of it for us. But pretty fun. Like, let's go back. This is a, this is a hilarious tournament that you should probably try and get to. And if, if not Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, it's amazing to get to that 16th hole for sure. Kevin, what do you think from an outsider's perspective? I think watching it on TV, I mean, it, it's just the golf tournament in general is awesome to watch on TV because you can just feel the crowd is a complete shit show. Uh, and, and you know, they're showing shots on hole 12 and you can just hear the screams from hole 16 through the TV. Uh, and, and, and I always get a kick out of watching you guys. Uh, you guys get a lot of coverage on the golf channel and stuff with your Sesame Street costumes. You guys have been wanting me to go every year and and I don't want to because I just can't imagine sitting in a costume in plus 35 degree weather for 14 hours. Uh, so, I mean, I give you guys props for doing it, but I also think you guys are idiots. So, uh, overall, from an outsider's perspective, it's pretty cool to watch, but um, definitely hearing your stories from, from the trampling, uh, I could see how that would shake you to your core. Yeah, and it, like it's an experience, I will say, and obviously sour. And actually, I was one of the two. There's only two of us that escaped the trampling. We were like ahead <laughs> of the people who fell. And I remember our one buddy, Dustin's brother-in-law, just grabs me by the back of the shirt and just like whispers a sweet nothing in my ear. Do not fall. Do not fall. Do not fall. And we make it through just as fences are going through. So we're start running. And like, keep in mind, I'm still tipping the scales at like 270, 275 at this point. So I get about halfway to the hole and I'm thinking I'm either going completely the wrong way or something happened because there's no way that none of these guys should have not passed me by now, if not all of them. So finally got to the hole called one buddy. He's like, oh yeah, we're in a completely different spot. We're not getting into that spot at 16 because we there, we got trampled. So I'm just thinking like, okay, yeah, the, the, you know, it got crowded and stuff. And then of course you go, we go meet up with them, sit down here. Everyone's like traumatized and hearing about it. And I go, oh my God, like we just barely escaped. Like how does the biggest, slowest guy out of the group somehow get out of that? But, and I, I think Lundy, you had it the worst and you know, you, you may have escaped injury at getting trampled but then you almost <laughs> lost your <laughs> you almost yeah. lost your eye to a flying breakfast burrito oh my god so yeah i went i went down almost immediately and then so thank actually yeah thank you for actually coming back dustin because i don't know if you pulled me out or if someone else did and then you helped me look for my shoes for about 10 seconds and then i think 
you got yours and I, I think I just said, ah, oh, screw it. I don't need one. I'm just going to go try and get a good, good seat. So then we sprinted to the stadium uh, and I was already like shooken up a bit because I'd just been trampled on for a few minutes and <laughs> was trying to get my bearings, figure out like what the hell just happened. So we get to the stadium and we get to our seats and, and I think we're all just kind of decompressing. You're like, okay, we finally made it. The hard part's over. We can relax, have a beer. And when you get there, they're, they're th- all the staff are, are throwing bottles of water and breakfast burritos. And like usually the staff are, are chucking them, not, not too hard, but some people when they get them, they're just firing these burritos like, like a bullet. So, so I sit down <laughs> and not two seconds later, I decided to take off my Ernie, my Ernie head. <laughs> and two seconds later, this burrito comes flying and fucking nails me right in the eye and it just i I, like i thought i thought it was like a bullet and i thought for i couldn't see out of that eye for about five minutes and i'm just thinking holy shit it's not even 705 and this day is off to a terrible start i've been trampled on i i I was stepped on 150 times i've taken a burrito in the face and now I don't know what's coming next. So I was just terrified for the next six hours. But with all that said, I did have a great time. Uh, I, I did have to take last year off because I needed a brick. I'd be willing to go back. But maybe we just maybe we just don't put the costumes on until we get there. Or maybe we just maybe take a leisurely walk instead. But, oh, God, that was a, that was a life alter. That was that was one of my. That was one of my most near-death experiences I've ever had, and I, I still think about it to this day. And I, I have to confess, I think I've told you this, maybe not, but th- that burrito was actually one that I tried to catch, and it glanced <laughs> off my middle finger, and it hurt, it bent it back. So I, I missed it, and I'm sitting there going, oh, my finger hurts so bad. <laughs> then I turn around and see you clutching your eye, oh, God. and it is just like bright red, and I'm thinking... Oh, I, I better not tell anybody that my finger hurts right now. Man, I so, thought I yeah. lost my vision, but no, I, it can't. By the time the golfers started coming by, I could see fine, and I was I was recovered. But that was, yeah, what a crazy day. Yeah, it's it's a memory. Like I said, it, it, right now, if we could do, if we had to go back and and obviously minus the trampling, I'd go I'd go through all of that again just to well be able to go anywhere. But it is, you know, we can laugh about it now and. It's something we talk about with everyone all the time and a great memory. So I'm sure everyone has has trips like that. But yeah, that, that was like nothing else. I already knew that trip was going to be like nothing else I'd ever done. And it exceeded expectations. Yeah. So when we can travel again, it's it's a place I'd like to go back to. Yeah, I think we'll bring Walsh too. Yeah, I'm sure we can talk him into it. You know, trampling's traumatizing and everything. But I think the most traumatizing thing for me that day was, you know, I FaceTime my wife and I explained the story to her and she goes oh geez that would have been great to see in the news sesame street gang gets killed in trampling at the waste management and that's my husband and i was like oh yeah maybe it's time to grow up a little yeah, but we did we made the local news we're in yeah, that's, before that's and, and i feel bad too because we're in the news and guess what i say right before before we go in someone says to me uh one you know one of the it was local news i think you know what's what's your strategy for for getting into, you know, getting into hole 16. I said, head down, elbows up and knock over whoever we have to. And and guess who looked like an idiot on the Arizona news? Because they showed that clip. I think we have it. I'll try and get it up on social media, you know, and they interview Big Bird. But yeah, it's, yeah, it, that was, that was something else. And Lund too. I just keep thinking of all the ways that sucked for you is you, you not only lost your shoes, but you had to throw away one. Yeah. So I did, lo- I did lose my shoes. And then at the end of the day, I went to the lost and found. They found one shoe, but what the hell am I going to do with one shoe? So I just, I just wore my big, my, uh, my Ernie shoes for the for the whole day and the rest of the night, which was whatever. I, I that was the least of my worries, believe me. Oh, and I do remember seeing a social media video someone did, and it's you, because you're in this big Ernie costume, running the best you can by yourself with no shoes on, like way after everyone's gone by, like the last kid picked in gym class. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, so uh, waste management highly recommend. Uh, I'm sure they've got the. I'm sure it's a lot safer now. And if if not, maybe we'll send this podcast to that to whoever runs that tournament so they can actually increase their their safety. Because uh, there's got it. There's got to be some lawsuits in the future if they don't. <laughs> 
Oh, dear.